Hello everyone, Argent here. So when I first started this channel, a series I used to do was um, Versus, where I would take two um, movies or two video games or two books that had some similar themes, um, but kind of took opposite approaches. Um, the, the thing was, the, the early ones were really kind of poor quality. Um, I didn't think they were very good. Like I did the uh, Dark Knight versus The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, I also did I, I also did Foundation versus Dune. Uh, I know that sounds really good, but it was it was pretty shitty, and I recorded it on my cell phone. So I'm gonna bring back the versus series. So what these are is they're reactionary reviews where I I kind of try to explore different works by kind of comparing them, um, particularly if they cover like I said a similar subject and kind of compare them. So these might be a little longer, but you're getting two for the price of one. So without further ado, let's look at the two um, works we have today. So uh, the two works we're going to be comparing is the book Rendezvous with the, um, which I believe is Arthur C. Clarke, and The Sphere by Michael Crichton. Now, these are two movies that, um, or sorry, two books, because I read the books. I haven't actually seen the movie of either one. If there's a movie, Rendezvous with Rama. Um, so these two books deal with how humanity reacts to dealing, uh, to, in, to meeting an alien species. Um, and they take two kind of profoundly different views of how humanity reacts to it. And more, how does humanity relate to an alien species? Um, the approach taken by Rendezvous with Rama is that aliens are basically, uh, anthropomorphic, um, they're pretty much exactly like us. And we kind of see this throughout the book. Because um, I remember when I was reading it, they kept saying, oh, that's used for storage. Oh, that's where the Ramans have their water. Oh, this plant is used for sewage. Um, and they just kind of like make all these, these massive inferences. And they're like, oh, we know how this, this ship works and um, all this kind of stuff. And you're just wondering, well, why would this the species from the other side of the universe, or the other side of the galaxy, have a completely human way of looking at the world? And even the kind of the creatures they find throughout the book look like crabs or look like spiders. Um, they aren't like some kind of Cthulhu-esque, completely different thing. And it's just, it's really kind of obnoxious. Um, meanwhile, the sphere kind of takes the perspective that um, an alien being is completely alien to the point that we can't really understand anything about them, uh, that we can't even relate to them uh, psychologically, which is a perspective that's also taken by the um, book Solaris, which I'll do a reactionary review of at some point. So let's just talk a little bit about the plot of both movies. So the plot of Rendezvous with Rama is a couple hundred, I think it's a hundred years in the future or something like that, Keep in mind, it was written back in the day. And humanity has colonized most of the solar system. Actually, that's probably the most interesting part of the book is the uh, Hermians, or the people who live on Mercury, and how humanities... Because I've never read a book before where Mercury's been colonized, which I thought was pretty interesting. But they've colonized the, um, the solar system, and there's some, like, United Planets dildo thing that rolls over the, uh, the solar system. And this, this massive object just shows up, and it turns out to be a ship the size of a moon. Um, so they send a crew to go and investigate it. So this takes place during the golden age of science fiction, some people call it. I personally call it the dark age of science fiction. Um, I personally just don't like stuff from this time period, like the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. Um, I've read a lot of it, and I don't really get why people like it so much. Um, with the exception of Dune, which I'll get into later. Um, but it's things like by Asimov. One summer I just read, like, I think it was like four of the Foundation books, a bunch of the robot books. Um, I read Stranger in a Strange Land. Um, I read this. I just read a bunch of stuff. I find stuff from that period really difficult to read. Uh, firstly, it's it's kind of like hard science fiction, so there's not necessarily really, I guess there's kind of different versions of science fiction. I kind of would say there's kind of hard science fiction, 
and then there's kind of existentialist science fiction. Um, hard science fiction is kind of something like Rendezvous with Rama or the Foundation books, where the entire focus is largely on kind of technical things. Um, they'll just go on and on and on about um, how things work, like how their um, rockets work, um, how computers are going to work in the future, how um, like repulsors or whatever are going to work in the future, and they just go on and on and on about that. And the focus is on the actual technology. Um, it's The characters are barely explored most of the time. Like, the Foundation series takes place over, like, hundreds of years, and every couple chapters, like, the main character changes. So there's really not a lot of room for any sort of development. Um, there's also kind of a general absence of humanity in these things. Oh, 2001 A Space Odyssey is another one kind of like this. Um, human emotion, th these people had a very, I guess you could say, materialist, reductionist view of the world. Um, there's almost kind of a contempt for human emotion, kind of a contempt for the human spirit, certainly a contempt for anything kind of religious or spiritual. Um, they also kind of, most of these books, there's an extremely liberal sexual climate that is, um, is taken for granted. Um, in Rendezvous with Rama, the main character has two wives, one on Mars, one on Earth, and um, there's no moral problem with having multiple wives in the book. And after, at the end of a mission, everybody on the spaceship just fucks each other. Um, gay and, like, everybody's bisexual in the future. Everyone just has orgies all the time. Uh, marriage is completely pointless. Everybody just kind of fucks everybody. Um, and it's kind of just treated as a given that the way humanity's been and kind of the impulses of humanity, I guess, kind of towards this kind of more socially conservative stuff will just disappear in the future. Um, and that's kind of stuff I find with the hard science fiction era. So you have assumptions that the the future will just be extremely liberal. There'll be a global government. Uh, everyone will just fuck everybody. Um, just kind of all sorts of, of things like that. And on the other hand, you also will have a focus on the other stuff. So what kind of more science fiction, uh, modern science fiction kind of... Um, is, is kind of what I call existentialist. Um, there's much less of a focus on having everything be technically coherent. Uh, the Matrix is an example of this. The idea is to use science fiction to explore um, thought experiments, to explore kind of concepts like free will, like certain moral decisions, um, to kind of take the robot beyond what I kind of felt Asimov often did and just had like him describing how robots work into more of a focus on is there a ghost in the machine uh, kind of things like um, uh, ex machina or, or things like that uh, and this fear really comes from that um, there, there's a bit of a focus on technical but the main focus is on profile psychologically profiling the characters um, kind of their interactions with each other and kind of addressing some fundamental questions so the sphere, on the other hand, because I've talked a fair bit about Rendezvous with Rama, is a, um, a team is selected to explore a spaceship they found at the bottom of the ocean. Um, this spaceship is a human ship from the future, and within it is the sphere, which is this massive sphere. So they, they, a lot of the book is spent with the various characters kind of trying to think about what it means um, exactly. Um, it's, it's presumed it's an alien object and kind of the different characters kind of project their worldview onto it. Um, the main character, uh, Norman Goodman, <coughs> is a psychologist, so he views the sphere as a psychological test. Eventually we discover what happens is you imagine the sphere to be open and it's open and once you step inside it, you're granted basically the power of a god and you can change reality um, however you can imagine it. So if you imagine, I don't know, a wall changing to pink, that happens. You can create things both with your conscious and subconscious minds. So Norman thinks that the sphere was created by an alien, that whoever uses unlimited power and it's kind of a morality test. Um, if you have an evil will and unlimited power, you'll destroy your species. However, if you have unlimited power, 
and are a good person, then you can use it to reach the stars with your civilization. So it's kind of, it's, it's a toy for determining if um, species are ready to kind of join the, the galactic universe. Um, the other main character, uh, one of the other main characters, Beth, doesn't really have an exact reaction to it. Um, she just, um, she views it, I think, as a way to gain power. Her character is kind of paranoid with um, being a female in the military. This was back before Obama was president, so women were restricted to non-combat roles uh, because uh, Flavius Patriarchus had passed the ban on women serving in the military back during the Roman days. Um, so she's kind of paranoid, so she just doesn't really um, understand this fear at all. And then we have um, Dr. Harry Adams, who's kind of a... Uh, I think he... I'm not sure if he has Asperger's or he's just kind of a dick, but he's like this um, genius black mathematician, and he just views the sphere as being... Um, just a piece of alien technology and that aliens are completely not anthropomorphic at all that we can't even begin to understand their psychology we can't even begin to understand them and this is just this thing may have no meaning he thinks this could be a garbage disposal unit uh this could be like a painting device this could be anything and the example he uses is a um a intelligent bacteria that comes across like a futuristic spaceship and thinks the spaceship is there no it's like a I don't know like in the spaceship is there to test their civilization and they go into like the antimatter drive and get destroyed or something basically his, his point is just like it's it's just something we, we can't try to rationalize it at all because it's completely foreign which I guess kind of reflects his um, perception. Um, he can't relate to other people because he's kind of an autistic mathematician who hates those other than, like, who just doesn't, isn't interested in um, the outside world. So he tends to think that the aliens are um, un-inscrutable. Un, uh, uh, whereas Norman is a psychologist, so he tends to believe that the aliens are completely understandable. So that's kind of the um, the difference between the approaches. Uh, there's also Ted, who's a physicist, and he's kind of, um, he has a big ego. So he tends to believe that the aliens are friendly and are there to um, help them. And he's kind of the only one who correctly understands the significance of the event. And he tends to believe that, um, he believes that, um, this is the most important part of human history. So he's always trying to kind of play it up and say, like, we should be taking this really seriously. This will change the way we look at the world. Um, also, we have, um, whatchamacallit, uh, we have that. Then we also have um, the military commander who just wants to use it as a weapon and completely uncritically. So we have all these different kind of perspectives on the aliens, etc., so what kind of happens is um, Harry manages to enter this sphere and he gains limitless power. Um, because though he, he doesn't understand himself or anything around him, um, he doesn't understand that he has the power. And his psychology, his subconscious mind creates a character named Barry who begins to talk to them through um, a, a console. And Barry starts to try to destroy them. Uh, reflecting uh, the subconscious desires and um, hatred of um, Harry. So then we also have um, Beth who goes into the sphere. And after she goes into the sphere, she begins to have her own paranoid delusions. Um, and, but, and she basically manages to trick Norman into thinking everything that's going wrong was done by um, by. Harry, so they they um they knock him out, but then she locks Norman in a room and tries to kill him because she has a major inferiority complex and she can't accept that she suddenly has limitless power. So because she can't accept this, uh, she assumes it must be Norman doing the whole thing and she tries to kill him. He manages to enter the sphere though, and because he's a psychologist and he understands himself, he's able to use the power consciously without any 
um, kind of shortcomings of it. It's really interesting because when he's in the sphere, he's, he talks to someone, and at first he thinks it's God, but ultimately uh, he kind of realizes that what it is is it's his subconscious he's speaking to. Um, it's a reflection of itself. And that what the sphere ultimately does is it gives life to imagination. And the sphere states that that is what separates humanity from everything else on Earth, is its ability to imagine its will that is capable of making things reality. And it's kind of a natural extension of something that exists. Someone can, like a human can imagine a car and then they can build the car. And that's something kind of unique about us. And this is just kind of taking that concept of the importance of human thought and how it's the most powerful thing in the world. So Norman succeeds in saving the other two, and they collectively agree to forget about the sphere. Um, because in the book, at least, they believe that the world is not ready for its power. Um, and, and unlike a lot of things where they um, basically, because a lot of movies like this, like, oh, we have to seal this power away, um we we can't use it there's uh we need to forget this they actually have a long scene where they talk about how memory is the essence of identity and that they're killing a part of themselves which is how i feel and why i always hate these stupid amnesia plots um <clears throat> and there's a lot of debate over it and they debate um whether or not they should use the power or whatever and ultimately barry basically said harry basically says sorry i got them mixed up um, well, they're the same person, <coughs> says that um, we can't keep the power because it was created by um, aliens who have are completely inscrutable to us, and we have no idea what the long-term um, consequences of any of this are. And he actually, because once again, uh, the way he perceives things, he tends to believe that um, the sphere was actually made by humans um, in the future. So th th that's kind of dealt with. And this is, once again, kind of contrast with Rendezvous with Rama, where the characters aren't really affected by anything. They just kind of go there. They just kind of... Um, there's no real exploration. They just kind of go there. They have excessively long descriptions of how everything works. And it's just kind of abstract. And it's not really realistic. I mean, Sphere also has a lot of descriptions of their underwater environment, etc., but it's it's a lot more relevant because they really kind of explore the fears of the characters, how they react in kind of a claustrophobic place. Uh, their personalities start to kind of grate on each other. So you kind of have all this a lot more. Um, the technology is interesting because this is in the 19, I guess, 70s? Jimmy Carter's president. So I guess during the 1970s. So the technology is all more probable. And it's, it's a lot easier to kind of relate to and kind of imagine as opposed to this stuff in the far future. Um, and, and just the, um, they, they use the technology to kind of um, explore issues of um, the individual, isolation, free will, all these kind of things. Whereas Rendezvous with Rama really doesn't explore any issues. Um, I guess the idea of human fear is vaguely... Um, explored because the the hermians or the people of mercury try to use a nuclear weapon to destroy rama but they're just kind of dismissed as xenophobic assholes and their reaction doesn't really make a lot of sense um humanity really doesn't seem to care much about the um meeting intelligent life um it's so so we kind of have these these two books one kind of represents this golden age of science fiction where everything's just tactical, there's no real character development. I don't even remember any of the characters' names. Every book's basically the same. I just find them pretty much uniformly awful, with the exception of Frank Herbert, who I kind of view as being the, the father of modern science fiction. Uh, and then we have Sphere, which is an excellent book that I highly recommend by the great Michael Crichton. Um, and yeah, so that's my reaction review. That's kind of my comparison of, of these two approaches to science fiction. Uh, I hope this was somewhat enjoyable at least, and I'll talk to you guys later.